love the collegiate game, the pomp, the pageantry of tradition rich college football. And tonight, Fox Sports 1's coverage kicks off with Washington State playing host to the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, live from Century Link Field in Seattle. Mike Leach and his Cougars now in year three, looking to become a staple in the bowl season, begin their 2014 campaign. We welcome you to our coverage here on Fox Sports 1. I'm the new guy. He's the old guy, but not chronologically. I'm That's Tim right. Rando, Joel Klatt by my side. Mike Leach really does believe in year three his program's gaining traction. Well, and he should, and I think that that starts with his quarterback. Every time that he's had an experienced quarterback at the helm, all the way back to his Texas Tech days, they've been explosive offensively, and that's exactly what he has in Connor Halliday. Last year, he led the country in his attempts. Unfortunately, he also led the country with those 22 interceptions. If he makes better choices with the football this year, watch out. They could put up some extraordinary numbers, Tim. On the flip side, Gary Nova's a young man that was a captain a season ago, but he threw so many interceptions, he was benched for yep. the last three games, including the bowl opportunity they, they had in New York. He's back as a captain and re-energized. And I love the way that he handled that because he's still a captain, like you said, but that means that he handled it with maturity and class, and his teammates saw that, and that was very important in that locker room because during the offseason, he was the key to that offseason. They went out, and Coach Kyle Flood hired a quarterback guru to be his offensive coordinator Ralph Friedgen the old Maryland coach of 10 years I expect Gary Nova to be a much improved player this season that's the kind of togetherness we're going to have all season long that's my right friend. arm in arm my friend Rutgers and Washington State and the fans got going early and this city cannot wait a few time zones for Rutgers to travel but they've been there and done that when we return it's the Cougars and the Scarlet Knights Big Ten and Pac-12 the Scarlet Knights make their way out onto the field just a few moments ago in preparation for tonight's matchup here at one of the loudest buildings in all of the National Football League, the home to the reigning Super Bowl champions. And the third member of our broadcast team, Jenny Tack, has more on our matchup. Jenny? Tim, thank you so much. Well, Washington State University will be making their 12th appearance at the home of the Seattle Seahawks, a tradition that started back in 2002. But according to Cougars athletic director Bill Moose, this will be the last time the Cougars play a home game at CenturyLink Field. The game was originally scheduled to create some buzz and exposure for the university. They don't need to do that anymore. They're going to be sticking to playing their home games back in Clover. Mike Leach now in his third season. Made his bones as an assistant coach with Hal Mummy at Kentucky before Bob Stoops really transformed the entire Big 12 with the electrifying offense he brought to Oklahoma, then set records at Texas Tech offensively. And Kyle Flood, longtime assistant at Delaware, then later Rutgers now in his third season. Eric Powell with the kick, and it comes back deep to Janori and Grant, the speed merchant, with 100 yards in his first touch. Almost a year ago to the day that he gets it out to the 22 yard line. That's where Rutgers will take over first and 10. We mentioned Gary Nova, young man who does have an opportunity to prove a few naysayers wrong. The 2,159 yards cut short, really, by having been benched, having to eliminate those interceptions, but having Ralph Friedgen, his fourth offensive coordinator in as many years, but one of the all time best, might be the best thing that ever happened to this young man brought a sense of calm to what Gary Nova is preparing for and calm in the pocket I expect him to play very well tonight out of the shotgun Paul James is the lone setback looking long that's Car Carew and he's got it Leontay Carew will go the distance and it's a touchdown Scarlet Knights 78 yards. Yeah, I'd say there's a sense of calm. How about that? What a sensational way to start the season. After a tumultuous offseason in which he had to earn his job back, Gary Nova drops an absolute perfect ball on the chest of Leonte Carew, who goes the distance. Wow. 
Kyle Federico in for the extra point. Now well, the graphics department will have a hard time putting together that drive time, right? <laughs> Took all of 16 seconds. Pretty quick. And the extra point is good. And Rutgers shocks this crowd of probably a little better than 30,000, many of whom made their way up from Pullman today. But take a look at this pass. And the balance that he threw it with. One hitch, the ball goes up in the air, and he knew it right away. You can tell when you got the fadeaway going as a quarterback, you know you got something brewing. And Leontay Carew with a fabulous route. That's one of his Jersey boys from Bosco Prep. Same high school as Nova. 6'1 junior. Boy, you're right. Maybe a little bit of wobble, but other than that, absolutely perfect. In stride. Federico preparing to boot it away. Christoph Williams, number 18. Ricky Galvin, number five, are the two deep for Washington State. A low line driver. Williams will take it and bobble it at the one. And he is out to the 21, maybe the 22 yard line. Stop was made by Kamoko Ture, big defensive lineman who's a quality gunner for the Scarlet Knights on their special teams. As you look at Connor Holliday, young man from Ferris High School in Spokane, Washington, who along with Nova did share the rather ominous stat of too many interceptions, most in the conference. 22 all told but yes threw for over 4,000 yards and is likely to break all of the records here at Washington State. First and 10 will call it from the 21. Dumps it over the middle to River Craycraft played as a freshman a true freshman a year ago he's out ahead off that shallow cross for a couple of yards Kevin Snyder 45. Linebacker whom we met with the other night, senior from Mechanicsburg, PA, with the tackle. Jamal Morrow is the lone setback for the Cougars. On second and eight. That pass right through the hands of Ricky Galvin, number five, out of Berkeley, California. Let's take a look at the impact players in tonight's game. I'm going to start with a running back. I know that sounds odd, but Jamal Morrow, 2,000 yards in high school. He's just a redshirt freshman. He's an explosive guy. They'll throw it to him out of the backfield. And then defensively, Steve Longa led the country in terms of freshmen with tackles last year. Playmaker at the second level with 123 tackles, seven and a half of those behind the line of scrimmage. A terrific player. Third down and eight. He'll join us. Quick hitch, and then the go. There it is. Ricky Galvin streaking down the sidelines. There will be a flag. Face mask to go with it. And the Cougars are in great shape. Devon Jacobs, not only with a bit of a horse collar, but also the face mask to boot. 52 yards and then some on the play. It doesn't take much for this offense to get started. Almost every other offense in the country plays off of rhythm and they need to be in rhythm in order to have big plays but not the air raid. A quick pump from Connor Halliday and all sorts of open space for number five Ricky Galvin the senior from Berkeley four touchdowns a year ago and then the ho the horse collar to boot at the end. We got the mask and the shoulder pads. Both against the defense and both against the same player. Number 29. Horse collar tackle. That penalty is declined. Face mask. After gets to the goal, automatic first down. Well, assess obviously the face mask penalty portion of that. We've had one targeting penalty have a player kicked out tonight that I know of. It happened in Atlanta in the matchup between Boise State and Ole Miss. A lot of surprises in this first night of college football. Rob Stone and company will bring you up to date at halftime. Jamal Morrow again the lone setback out of the gun he gets it and he is stopped behind the line of scrimmage may have lost two on the play and there's Steve Longa boy so quick 123 tackles a year ago as a freshman the defensive MVP and you can see why diagnoses the play so quickly and then makes the stop in the Cougar backfield for another tackle for loss second down and 12 from the Rutgers 16 yard line the Rutgers on the receiving end of this air raid offense of Washington State 
Sideline pattern to Maley, and Vince Maley's got it. Ushered out just inside the seven. If you're going to give them space to run a quick route, especially inside the 20 with a lot of cushion there, they're going to take it. This offense is predicated on space. The quarterback is taught, find the space in the defense and then read out the progression to try to exploit that space that you see from the pocket. He saw the opening on the outside and took it with Maley. Third and two. Right over the middle and uh, batted down. Tipped into the air at the line of scrimmage. Rutgers got those big mitts up there to knock it down. Fourth and two coming up, and the mad scientist is always known for going for it, and he wouldn't have to be in the red zone to make that choice. He'd do it from his own 25 on occasion. So here we go. Galvin comes split wide to the bottom of your screen, actually in the slot. Myers 88 at the bottom. Goes to the safety valve, and it's not there for Maley, and the Rutgers defense stiffens. That spot's going to be short of the five-yard yeah, line. Yeah, it is. The Cougar faithful aren't going to like it, but... I this, thought it was a good spot. I thought it was, too. That knee was down closer to the six. I don't think he was leaning across the five-yard line. Connor Halliday pleading his case here, but I thought that the head linesman was all over that call. I did, too. Leach. Halliday had a big completion to set up shop inside the 10, but Naha set Rutgers. The toughness of Kyle Flood's team. It should be Rutgers' ball at the six-yard line first down, and the replay would clearly illustrate that the spot was correct, Joel. Yeah, the knee goes down right about the six-yard line. Ball clearly short of the five, which was the yard line to gain. Excellent stop by Rutgers, bowing their neck, getting their offense back on the field. But now in the precarious situation of being backed up near their own goal line. Seven plays, 83 yards, but no points for Washington State. Desmond Peoples comes in to dot the I formation for the first time tonight for Rutgers. Play fake to him, and Nova will throw an interception. Picked off by Connor Pritchard. who had just come into the game had not even turned around for the ball. So clearly a mix-up for him. Nova threw it right into the hands of the linebacker, Tana Pritchett. Play-action pass from deep inside your own territory is a risky call anyways, but especially when a sophomore that hasn't had much playing time in his career gets his first action in the game. Because of the pressure applied to Gary Nova, his clock wound up faster and he had to get rid of the ball because he was in his own end zone and Tana Pritchard right there. Peoples hadn't even turned around, Tim, just like you explained. Gerard Wicks is in the game for the first time and they go fade and it's incomplete. Myers had a chance for it. He has stumbled a little bit with the ball in the air. Lost his footing. It was right there for Washington State. He stumbled right there. I thought it was knuckling on yeah, him. Yeah, it was. And because the ball was thrown so poorly from Holiday, I thought that became a much tougher catch because of that. Holiday just shot putting it into the corner yeah. of the end zone. Theron West is in the game. Halliday now seeing the pocket collapse goes down back at the seven yard line. So we've seen the, the good and the bad of both of these quarterbacks early on in this game. And this is this is the one problem Tim with this offense. You know when there's no running game and you get inside the five yard line with a first down. And all of a sudden, there's two pass attempts, and you end up with a third and goal from the seven. That's a problem. You've got to be able to turn around and hand the ball off and get into the end zone from the two-yard line. Myers again at the bottom of your screen. Christoph Williams also in. Pass is caught. Great back. Tries to spin, but cannot get away from Justin Goodwin or Steve Longa. It's a gain of four, and yet another. 
decision to be made. This believe, time they'll opt for three. I believe that this Washington State team is surprised at the speed of the linebacker core for yeah. Rutgers. In particular, number three, Steve Longa. Steve Longa is all over the field right now, the sophomore from Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Just a terrific player, and he is playing at a different speed than everybody else on the field. Craycraft will hold for Eric Powell. 22 yard attempt. And the left footer puts it through. After being stopped after an 83 yard drive on downs, an interception gave Washington State a golden opportunity. But the Cougars missed on an opportunity to fade pattern and had to settle for three. Washington State trails will be back. I can't wait to watch that Baylor offense. <laughs> they're they're going to be something to watch now with Shock Linwood as their running back, Antoine Goodley, who Tim I think could be a Bolitnikov finalist when it's all said and done at the end of the year. Orion Grant is back deep as Powell boots it well into the end zone, and they'll bring it out to the 25. What an excellent series from Rutgers defensively to hold Washington State to three points. First and goal from the two to hold them to a field goal attempt just an absolute win. Hey they had five plays and no yards inside the 10 yard line Washington State in those last two drives inside the 10. Quick hitch going out to Simmons 84 and he's out close to a first down maybe just a little shy DeAndre Caldwell ushered him out and he's another one of the converted running backs this one for Washington State playing each of the safety positions for Mike Leach's team and Simmons the wide receiver great story hurt himself as a senior but Rutgers honored his scholarship and he told himself that he was going to go and play right away and he has done that now he's a sophomore and much uh, bigger part of this offense for Gary Nova and Ralph Regan Peoples is the lone setback second down less than a yard. Peoples. Nice counter, really, when you think about it, to Paul James. Different kind of back, Joel. 5'8", scat back can make you miss. And uh, he's out for first down. It always seems like those running backs that are short have excellent vision, and that cut low to the ground, low center of gravity, and they find that lane, slide to the backside, and before you know it, they're moving the chains. Excellent run there from Peoples. Those short, choppy steps can come in handy. He pulls the lone setback. First and ten. He gets the quick pitch. And the lane was there and he burst through it very nicely. Ahead for seven. Paul Yulu made the tackle. And Paul James is their featured back, but Coach Flood told us that Desmond Peoples is their best back. And Ralph Region wants to feature him because he's the hardest to bring down. And he shot there, constantly splitting defenders and gaining those three and four extra yardage for the hidden yardage. Second and three. Good cut back by Peoples. And he spins and spins inside the 30 to the 27. They got it going now. Ahead for six here. And you know the best part about this drive? That defense that just had to be on the field inside the 10 for yeah. those critical plays is getting a nice rest on the sidelines and they'll get even more of a rest as Rutgers will wait for this clock to go to zero and take this ball game to the second quarter with a four point lead. But they are dominating this game right now. Especially up front. That offensive yeah. line right now starting to impose their will on the defensive front of the Washington State Cougars. Kyle Flood said, we know what they're saying about us. We'll prove otherwise beginning tonight. So far, so good for the third year coach in New Jersey. As we open the second quarter here, our kickoff game on Fox Sports 1. Tim Randall along with Joel Platt. Rutgers showing some of that tenacity, the toughness, the defense that they built their brand name as yeah. an Eastern power on under Greg Schiano. He'd be very proud of the way his pupil is handling this club tonight. There's no doubt about it, especially the defense. You know, their front seven has really won the line of scrimmage. They've been the difference so far because of those trips for Washington State inside the 10-yard line. And Tim, now what you're seeing is conversely the offensive line for Kyle Flood starting to win that battle and impose their will on the Washington State defensive line. Starting to run the ball much more efficiently on this drive for Gary Nova. 51 yards rushing 
To only minus five for Washington State. And right away, it's James again, bursting off the right side. Inside the 20 to the 19, where Tracy Clark, number 22, a comeback story indeed, making the tackle. The corner, senior out of Pittsburgh, California. He was the corner beat on the first play of the game by Leonte Carew, but a resilient guy. Incredible story surrounding him. We'll have more on that as the game progresses. Out of the eye set, James dots it on second and one. And he's got the first down. Just shy of the 15, we'll call it the 16, a pickup of four. This offensive line is experience. All of their starters back. In fact, nine starters back on this offense. The only starters that they're missing were on the outside, the wide receivers. Benton Bujari, a 6'4", 295-pound senior. He's the center for this team. A Remington Award watch list player. Terrific center. And right now, he's mowing them down up front. The team Bujari, outstanding player. You're right. He's on every watch list at that position. And he has a nice block there for James, who burrows all the way to the end zone. They will give him about a half yard shy of it. And it'll be first and goal. 14-yard gain right to the doorstep of the end zone. Watch the left guard, Caleb Johnson, and Patim Bajari, the center, just mashing down the Washington State line. That's what provides the cutback lane. And Paul James with excellent vision in order to find it. See that? Just running them down where they want to go. Washington State wanted to run a little slant. They run them where they want to go, and James does the rest. And now they are knocking on the door of their second score of the night. 11 plays on the drive, nine rushing, two passing. First and goal from the one. James off the right side. An extra surge, and he gets in for the touchdown. The will of this Rutgers team up front, even in the goal line defense, Washington State got pushed around late, and James kept churning those legs to get in. Well, if they were in stunned silence before, you could hear a pin drop now here at Century Link Field. 12 plays, 75 yards, 631 off the clock. This is a maneuver a number of teams use now when setting up for the extra point. Giving uh, everyone a chance to look at that for the potential of what could happen down the road. Kyle Federico for the extra point. Knuckled it through there. And Washington State finds themselves down 14 to 3 in essentially a home game for them against Big Ten upstart Rutgers. Rutgers leads it by a score of 14 to 3 along with Joel Klatt, Mike Pereira upstairs here in the booth. We also have Jenny Taft downstairs as you look at the scoring drive 12 plays 75 yards. Paul James takes it in from a yard out and Rutgers physically is taking it to this Cougars team right now. They look like a Big Ten team yeah, they do. right now. They really do. And the old offensive line coach has got to be proud. That's uh, Kyle Flood's pedigree. Kick is going to come down to Christoph Williams from the goal line. He's out ahead past the 25 to the 26 yard line and let's go down to Jenny Tab. Jenny. Tim thank you well Connor Halliday with some early struggles as we've all seen watching Connor earlier today in the beginning of the game he was sitting on the bench all alone Mike Leach did come and talk to him didn't look angry but offered him some words of wisdom no one really had come over to check in with him but Connor Halliday prides himself on being a confident guy he said he can bounce back from getting hit down early you need to see him bounce back right now yeah you know he's uh, he's one of those guys that does not shy away from leadership. Robert Lewis, number 15, is coming to the game for the first time in wide receiver. Empty backfield. Halliday with time. Floats it over the middle. Caught by Don Williams. Look out. One man to beat. He does have the angle on him. Nice spin move, and he's down inside the 10. Six. 
64 yards before Delon Stevenson was able to run him down. Great anticipation over the middle of the field and then just a terrific run by Williams to spin his way all the way inside the 10 yard line. But now that they're inside the 10, this is where the problems have occurred earlier in the ball game. This is when Rutgers has had a lot of success defensively holding Washington State to field goal attempts. Wicks and West again in the backfield. And it's Gerard Wicks buried at the line of scrimmage again. Tim, they don't have an answer inside oh, the you're five. Right. You're right. They don't have the space to run those oh, routes. Oh, what they'd give for a Reuben Mays or a Stephen Broussard uh, of Washington uh, State uh, fame, uh, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> or Baron Batch yeah, from Texas Tech was yeah. an old Mike Leach back. You know, Mike is in his third year after winning four conference games a year ago. This was about the time in Lubbock when they got traction and won no fewer than eight games every year. Fade pattern, corner of the end zone incomplete. Vince Maley disrupted beautifully by Garif Glashen. What a play by Glashen. Didn't ever turn his back to the quarterback, but he played the hands of the wide receiver. As soon as the hands of the wide receiver got close enough to get into a catching position, he goes up and breaks the hands with his right hand. That's that way. is textbook from yeah. Glashen. That's the way you talk. What a difference a year makes. He was torched a season ago at this time up at Fresno. They've tried everything, running it, throwing the slant, throwing the fade. I would look to River Craycraft here, the sophomore, the tight end, 46 receptions a year ago on the inside to work one-on-one. -on -one. Sure-handed. They go for the corner route. It's there. Touchdown, Isaiah Myers. Quick out pattern. And just what Washington State needed. Well, Jenny Taft uh, looked in during that timeout a little while ago and heard uh, Mike Leach telling his team he wanted to pick up the pace of play, and it certainly did in that uh, sequence. Five plays, 80 yards, only 2.08 off the clock. Tim, this is a harder throw than it looks. Inside the five, throwing the out route to the pylon. Excellent velocity right on the money. Connor Halliday. Loving it. Washington State back in this ballgame, 14-10. Rutgers leading Washington State 14-10, but the Cougars with their first touchdown of the game moments ago kick it away. Janorian Grant takes it at the seven-yard line. One of the best in the country at this. A little high hurdle act at the conclusion of that run. But the tackle was made by Theron West, the reserve running back who's had a few blocked kicks in his day as you look at Myers the recipient of that touchdown pass from Connor Halliday first down for Rutgers quick swing pass complete to Simmons he's been on the receiving end three times already tonight he's ahead for seven yards I love what they're doing on first down, Tim. You know, it's it's little screens, some runs here, but they've mixed it up so well with Ralph Friedgen calling the plays that they've had a number of times in this situation right here, second and short. Second and four is a play caller's dream. Everything in the offense is at his disposal. A lot of times they choose to go with a big play action pass. Quick pitch to James. He cuts away from the boundary. I talked about his vision a moment ago. How about eyeing the end zone? Touchdown, Rutgers. 56 yards. And I'd say they reestablished themselves. Wow. Anytime you see that bunch set with those three wide receivers in a diamond position, especially on the short side of the field, they love to run that toss sweep. A big reason is because of number 46, Michael Burton, that block on the outside, and then the cut. What an excellent cut from Paul James. 13 rushes, 110 yards, and two touchdowns in the first half. That is why he is an all-conference running back. Federico will come in for the extra point and just like that the Scarlet Knights answer I think they felt like he was headed for the boundary and then when he cut back against the grain they were stunned and had no answer for him there 
mean, it looked like a stretch play it did. that was going to the sideline, and then he just cut. And the afterburners, I think, surprised Washington State. I thought they did, too. I think it was Tracy Clark, number 22, the corner on the outside. He actually played it perfectly because the fullback, Michael Burton, was supposed to try to hook block him so that the outside was free. Take a look. Watch Michael Burton. Here's this. So he's coming around, and then there's Tracy Clark. See, he spills the play back inside. That's what he's supposed to do, but then there's no Washington State Cougars to help him out. His friends were not flowing to the football. Yeah, yeah. And, and safeties were late, very late. Christoph Williams from his two. He's ahead to the 27, maybe the 28 yard line. Well, it's the. Well, he was resourceful that time, if not uh, a scrambler, resourceful enough to get ahead for five yards, and that'll bring up second down. The raging debate coming into this season is over the 13-member panel that I will tell you has tremendous dignity and integrity. Uh, we don't have to worry about uh, Collie Matrix polls or the Harris Interactive poll anymore. It's about what the football panel thinks. That pass is caught by Malin. He's got it out to the 45-yard line. But strength of schedule, conference championships, all of that will come into play. Very vague they are, really, with regard to determining how they come up with four. And I think that's because they want to protect the integrity that they're talking about. They will have standings put out yeah. in late October that we can follow through the course of the end of the regular season. Shallow cross taken by Maley, and he's back to the original line of scrimmage. Kevin Snyder makes the tackle. Middle linebacker that we were talking about a little earlier. It was such an important play on, on first and forever, first and long. The whole goal for the quarterback is to get half of it back. And now you're in a more manageable second down situation. That's exactly what they did. And now they're in more of a base offense than they would be if they were in second and 20. Second down and nine. There's that hitch again that worked so effectively. This time complete to Ricky Galvin. Now they got that 52 yard completion that got him to the doorstep before being turned away on a very similar pattern. A hitch and go and Lorenzo Waters made the stop. Trying to go for that little hitch route on the outside where the inside receiver would then block and Galvin from the inside just slips through and in the inside seam wide open. Excellent throw from Halliday. Clock now under two minutes remaining in the first half. Well, Halliday, resourceful again, this time decides to throw it away in the general direction of Galvin. And uh, Mike Bresky, we talked a little bit about him earlier, the defensive coordinator for Washington State. Actually, Rutgers' Joe Rossi is uh, the young man that was given the job not that long ago, right before the bowl game, after... Dave Cohen was fired. This is a staff that has four new assistant coaches and changing coordinators on both sides of the ball. Rossi said he wanted his team to swarm to the football. They've done that tonight. That pass is caught right down the sideline. Touchdown. Mainly. with the extra point coming up. And just as you mentioned, Joel Platt, they can score in a heartbeat. And for those of you that thought it might take 40 to win tonight's game, well, you you could be right. Now we're back, now we're back on track, <laughs> apparently. Washington State down by four. Now at the end of the first half, let's go back to our studios. Rob Stone, Peppers Papadakis, Dave Wanstead. Powell with the kick. 
Christoph Williams will take a knee and they'll have the ball at the 25 yard line. Let's go down to Jenny Taft who has more. Tim thank you Well, I had the chance to catch up with both coaches as for Mike Leach he said it's bringing it all back to that speed he needs to have his guys set that tempo that's one thing that he wasn't pleased with in the first just what he said in that huddle earlier and as for Kyle Flood well he is thinking that the guys are running the ball well they need to maintain that aggressiveness he wasn't disappointed in that one interception that Gary Nova had overall very pleased with the way his quarterback has started the season well if you heard what Dave Weinstadt had to say and it didn't take very long after no. we tossed it to him. Ralph Friedgen needs to probably pound it a little bit more in the second half. Uh, that's, a, that's an old coach for you, right? And, and I tell you what, uh, love working with, with Coach Wanstad. He's going to be a terrific addition to our team. And swing it out to Wicks, and Gerard Wicks, the redshirt freshman from Long Beach Poly, by way of Carson, California, out for five yards. We've run that quite a bit, and it's not a swing route from the backfield but they're actually running it as a flat route the difference is the direction that the running back turns his head back to the quarterback so he's looking back Tim over his back shoulder his left shoulder if he's going to the left side his right shoulder if he's going to the right side very difficult catch and throw when you're running it that way on second down that passes to Craycraft and the sure handed sophomore has it out to midfield Longa made the tackle the leading tackler on this uh, Rutgers football team Rutgers is going to have to start running some man coverage because with zone coverage those spaces are too big in the middle of the field and they've hit that basic route just the right over the middle behind the linebackers about four or five times now since the beginning of the second quarter and Connor Halliday is making quite a night for himself Holiday again lofts it into the air puts plenty of air underneath it and Wicks makes the grab coming out of the backfield a little bit like Theron West this is a youngster that can get out into pass patterns you had better be able to do that if you're going to be a running back for Mike Leach how about this that's a defensive end out there trying to cover him that's David Maluski number 90 but you're right right over the shoulder excellent concentration there from the running back Gerard Wicks redshirt freshman excellent burst Mike Leach told us third down and a yard to go on that crossing pattern to Craycraft is good for another first down at the 31 yard line of Rutgers in Washington State has the giddy up that Jenny was talking about as we open the second half of play they're playing quickly here check that play clock as they get an opportunity to get the playoff after they set the downs now something we should point out Pac-12 is only using seven officials the other autonomous five are using an eighth just to place the ball into play that look in is to Maley, twisting and turning and down at the six 25 yards and a first and goal coming up Bill Walsh created an equation for quarterbacks timing plus ball placement equals yards after the catch a ball thrown right on time to the face of Maley created an opportunity for him to get the ball inside the 10 yard line. Mark it at the seven, first and goal. Halliday for Craycraft, touchdown! Defensive coordinator Joe Rossi is a, a picture's worth a thousand words. That sort of said it all. And did not get necessarily the response he wanted. Eric Powell is in for the extra point. What a beautiful throw from Connor Halliday. On time, accurate. Right at the face mask of his wide receiver. Plant and throw. The strong arm quarterback from Spokane has the lead for here the, in Seattle. For the very first time. Washington State, 14 unanswered now, with their first lead of the night. Connor Halliday with a really nice play here at developing. He's taught by Mike Leach to look for grass space on the field and he saw it right away and that's why he released the ball immediately right as the wide receiver Craycraft breaks the plane of the linebacker he's releasing it predetermined before the snap he knew where he wanted to go looked off the safety and threw a bullet for a touchdown and Lorenzo Waters was late in reacting 21 and that 
That's the young man that Rossi was chatting with along the sidelines. He should have identified that a little sooner. And this uh, boot is high, and Grant will take it at the six-yard line. Janarian Grant out to the 27-yard line. Well, on third and eight. That's what the doctor ordered to Grant. First down all the way to Washington State's 41-yard line. Boy, don't you love when a player answers the bell? Yeah. And that's exactly what Gary Nova did. He had struggled since that first pass of the game. And he comes back, and guess what? In rhythm, on balance, throws a strike down the field to the excellent return man, Janarian Grant. What a play. They needed that one bad. Mitchell Peterson made the stop. First and 10 from the 41 of Washington State. Three step drop. And they go to the out route. Carew, the split end. Teammate of high school, of course, uh, of uh, Gary Nova, stopped by Tracy Clark after a game of six. Second down and four coming up. Here's that down and distance. Every time I saw a play come in at this down and distance, I was hoping it was going to be play action, trying to take a shot at the end zone, especially from this point in the field at the 35 yard line. I mean, they're borrowing a page from the Stanford Cardinal attack in this sequence. James again. Nice little stop and go move, and he gets down inside the 19 yard line again of three, third and two forthcoming. The most important trait that coaches are looking for in a running back outside of ball security is the ability to fall forward. The hidden yardage. James gets that. You know, he reminds me of a running back Notre Dame had back in the day, Anthony Johnson. Yeah. Remember That's that a great, name? Great point. Yeah. He, he looks like a guy that can run the stretch play and also take it inside and just beat you up. Had a pretty nice pro career, too. Spent a lot of time with Steve Berline at, with the Carolina Panthers. Now the fade. Incomplete intended for Carew. Tracy Clark was right there with him. And fourth and two is coming up. Boy, third and two after running the ball that successfully during the course of that drive. I don't know if I want to just <laughs> throw a fade. When my offensive line is rolling like they've been rolling. Well, if only if you're doing one of two things, right? Going for it or faking it. What do you think? Kyle Flood doesn't seem like that type of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> More by the book. Yeah. Federico will try a 36 yarder. It is by the book, and the kick is right through the uprights. But it was worth consideration. <laughs> Thought I would throw it out there. You know, it, it it does remain though. Fade is such a low percentage it play. Is. Paul James has really owned this quarter and that series, but Rutgers able to get three out. And why not let the quarterback believe he's got some confidence? I think that's what Fridge is doing. Big picture decision. Christoph Williams is back deep. Federico will boot it away. All of the action on this Thursday night has wound down. We're the last. Division one college football game that's ongoing and it should be entertaining the rest of the second half. Brought out by Christoph Williams. Morrow and Wicks are the setbacks out of the shotgun and it's a quick wide receiver screen to Bailey. He's out to the 43, maybe the 44 yard line. Delon Stevenson made the tackle. These three TD drives that Washington State has had, drives that lasted 208, 310, and 233. So that's as advertised the air raid offense. But we would have expected to have a few more of those kinds of drives. Rutgers took control of this game at the line of scrimmage early on. Quick slant taken by Maley. Good for a first down at the 48 yard line. He's become a go to guy in these uh, touchdown jaunts of theirs. Good one there to make the tackle. The converted wide uh, running back for. Rutgers. First and ten, just short of the 49. And a 
shallow cross to Calvin Green. Number 83, the freshman from Sacramento, California. Another one of the starters that had never started before tonight's game from Luther Burbank High School. And good defense there by Kevin Snyder running all the way across the field with the speedy receiver. Was able to drag him down. He is the fastest of the receivers for Leach. And Snyder's 235, so quite a task for the inside linebacker. Second and six. Over the middle, Craycraft. Down at the 24 yard line. Lorenzo Waters makes the stop. A 23 yard game. Check out this. As soon as he clears those linebackers, the ball is going to be on his frame. Great route. See how he dips out to the outside just to create space for himself. Ball is on time, accurately thrown. Hunter Halliday doing a heck of a job finding his tight end, River Craycraft, in the middle of the field. He has a little bit of a Wes Welker look about him, doesn't he? Uh, they all do. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> that ever plays for Mike Leach yeah. has that quality. 408 yards in the air now. Craycraft with another reception at the 20 yard line. Season ago, he had 46 catches, 614. This is a team that had seven guys on their two deep that had 30 catches or more a season ago, and they've all returned. And we haven't even seen the guy that led the team in receptions a year ago, Gabe Marks. Yeah, that's right. Morrow and Gerard Wicks now the setbacks. Out of the shotgun for Holiday. And on second down, it's Maley again. Well, he gets the yards after the catch, doesn't he? Down to the seven. First and goal, Washington State. Another accurate throw on a slant, which provides Tim yards after the catch. That's when I know a quarterback is really feeling it seeing the field well when he's able to deliver the ball like that and the wide receiver can run through it 10 consecutive completions 15 in the last 16 right now for Connor Halliday looking to the corner and it's dropped boy it was right there for Don Williams it was perfect that was a perfect pass oh. absolutely perfect thrown before Don Williams was out of his break Right on the money. Yep. And again, plenty of cushion by Glashen. Well, he was unabated into the end zone on that quick out. Second and goal. Under pressure and dump this time. Little pressure coming from Kamoko Toure. That's the gunner on the. Uh, Special teams that's so tough. That's a seven yard loss, and you see Holiday comes up limping. Kamoko Ture from Newark, New Jersey. Red shirt freshman. He's got quite a future in front of him. Absolutely, and this is the fastest way that you get a quarterback out of rhythm, is you get somebody right in his face. Ture, excellent play. That's caught, touchdown. Isaiah Myers again. He's a little slow gathering himself. He took a big hit. But that's because it was a very tight window to get that ball. Fully extended, too. Fully extended. Halliday took a chance. Meyer sold out to get that ball for a touchdown. It's not their first lead, but it is their largest lead. And like the old BYU offense of years ago, inside, outside, all around the town, seven or eight guys can beat you. Myers has done it twice tonight. The Cougars lead here in Seattle. Isaiah Myers with his second touchdown reception of the night. Tim Brando, Joel Klatt, Jenny Taft, Mike Barrera, happy to have you with us as Jorian Grant brings it out from two yards deep. Grant spinning off a couple of tacklers and keeping it alive to the 24 yard line. First down, James dots the eye. Play fake to him. Oh, this is a nice play to Burton. This is what they were talking about. 
Young man can catch it, knows what to do with it. He looked like he was running the triathlon there. A couple of high hurdles along the way before Clark takes him down inside the 30. That's a 35-yard gain for the fifth-year senior from Long Valley, New Jersey. You just got the sense that at some point he was going to have a large impact on this game. He's been blocking so well for Paul James, and now fake it to James, slip him out into the flat, and he shows you just how athletic he can be with his 230-pound frame. James again gets it. And we'll get to about the 30-yard line, maybe a yard. That's about it. Xavier Cooper making the tackle. They'll say he got stopped at the line of scrimmage. But in a lot of respects, and I think it's because Kyle has been on this staff for such a long time, they're so proud of the accomplishments, the facilities, the growth of the program, the fact that they've spearheaded really a sense of collegiate love in and around the five boroughs of New York and the state of New Jersey. It matters to them that they be relevant early in the Big Ten. Second and ten. They go fade and they go through. He's got it and he is decked immediately at the 10 yard line by Clark. Every time we see or hear a hit like this, we expect a flag. I think it was a good no call. Well, because it was done really with the elbows and the forearm. And not to the head or neck area. That's right. James again. And he's got it down to the five. Tony Pole, senior run stopper from Union City, California, with the tackle. He'll check out. And Robert Barber, 92, comes in for him, the sophomore. So important that they answer the touchdown from Washington State with a touchdown of their own. They cannot be forced to attempt a field goal here. They've got to punch this one in. It's how you chase. We talked about that early tonight. you got to be able to respond. Offset eye with James in the backfield. Nice piercing move again by Tana Pritchard. He's made a couple of big plays in run support. Also has the interception. Tana, Loss of two. Tana Pritchard just like a missile through that offensive line. Understanding and with the vision, up. understanding what's going on with the play, Pritchard able to get through there for a tackle for loss. Well, this is a good time for the quarter to end. Gives Rutgers a chance for a free timeout because a big play is coming up. 31-24 with a huge play coming up on third down. A great way to start our Thursday night coverage and the entire college football season on Fox Sports 1. Tim Brando, Joel Klett. What do you think they're going to come up with here? This is important yeah. for them to answer with a touchdown, not with three. You know, on the, on the right, when you're on the right hash, it, it really prevents the play caller from calling a lot of those bootlegs because traditionally you want to give that quarterback space to roll out. So I would guess that he's going to be from the pocket here. Uh, he's looked at Janarian Grant most of the time on third down. He's in the slot near side. Nova under pressure. Ad libs and there's a man. It was Carew. The ball is tipped around and incomplete. Carew was there for just a moment, but some help came defensively for Rutgers. Good pressure initially. You're right. That was intended for Carew. I don't think Nova even saw Grant coming from the left side of the formation. No. He flew through there and tried to corral that pass up but that was headed for Carew who was open 25 yard try now for Federico gotta get points out of this that's important one possession game as we are just underway here in the fourth and final quarter but being turned away that's a victory for the Washington State defense and they did it with pressure Carew was in the corner, but the moment he was found, there was plenty of defensive help. Kaliulu, one of them. We've already had upsets. Absolutely. Louisiana Monroe out of the non 
autonomous five, a winner at home tonight against ACC Wake Forest. They were a slight underdog, but they got the win. Texas A&M, an underdog on oh, the road, beat double, South Carolina. Double-digit underdog in that game. Christoph Williams takes it out to the 20-yard line. Morrow and West in the backfield now, and it's going to be Morrow on the delay, and he is stopped in his tracks. Piercing through there, Jonathan Aiken, 26, the senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with a tackle. Keep an eye on Kamoko Ture, 58. Back into the game. Outstanding pass rusher. Coming off the edge. This one is thrown. Air mail just a bit, intended for Maley. I think Halliday had an idea of where Kamoko Ture was as he launched that one. And it's fourth down and three. They'll have to go into a punt formation. He's a redshirt freshman. The last time he was on the field in high school, he led the state of New Jersey with 19 sacks. So you're absolutely right. He's a young guy that they're expecting a lot out of in terms of the pass and rush. At a, at a time when fatigue is setting in with some veterans, he's got a lot of bounce in his step. Fresh legs. Yeah. Only the second punt in 10 possessions tonight. Marion Grant is back deep. He can bring punch back just as easily as kicks. This is a beauty, but there's room. Look out, Janarian Grant. Up ahead to about the 27-yard line. 53 yards that boot. It was a dandy return for eight by Grant. Yeah, what an excellent punt to completely change the field position. You, th you would think, based on where that punt was taking place, that they would get the ball around the 35 minimum, maybe even the 40 or 45. So Desmond Peoples is now in the backfield. They're going to give Paul James a breather. Great bootleg throw out to Carew, and that's a first down at the 42 yard line. Bootleg action off the fake, a 30 yard gain. Anytime that you get the quarterback out of the pocket like that on a designed rollout, you're trying to layer the defense. You've got a flat route. You're bringing somebody from the backside to try to be that middle route, and then you're sending someone from the front side deep, and he goes to that middle route who's dragging across the field. Excellent read. We always read it short to deep. If the flat route was there, you give it to him right away, and we would call give him the rail and let him get up the flat route. First down 10 from the 32-yard line of Washington State. Nova's pass is caught. Negligible gain to Janarian Grant. Ahead for maybe three yards to the 29. Well, they're sort of spoon feeding him into the game as a slot receiver, Grant. No more for special teams. But we're beginning to see the kind of offense that we thought we would see, albeit much of it on the ground for Rutgers, uh, thanks to the play of Paul James primarily, who's out of this series. He just came back into the game moments ago. Four people. He's the lone setback now. There's Simmons. He's got it. Touchdown. John Simmons, the sophomore from Harrington Park, New Jersey. Bergen Catholic, 29 yards, the strike. He went back shoulder and really didn't have to. He was he was wide open. And Nova has been so hot or cold in this game, and that's the good Gary Nova that showed up on that play. Terrific read, and the key was, Tim, he had time in the pocket to let that develop down the field, which hasn't been the case mm -hmm. during the course of this second half too often. But Nova with an excellent ball to the outside. The defender can't get there. And they wind up in the end zone. Now uh, remember this Simmons another one of those young men from New Jersey Gary Nova as uh, was prescribed to us by the one and only Ralph Regan loves his boys his Jersey Jersey boys even Frankie Valley had to have Bobby Gaudio to write his hits it's a team game and Rutgers regains the lead. Uh, the protection in the pocket was so good there for Rutgers. Gary Nova playing with the kind of confidence he had very early in the game. He lost it later in the half. It's back. Yeah, and it allows him to make a secondary read down the field. And he sees the linebacker all over his tight end. And so he's able to get to the outside. And that's when he sees the corner start to drop off towards the middle of the field. And he gets to the outside receiver, Simmons. And 
that's an easy touchdown for a quarterback. But it all starts with the amount of time that he had to read that play out and get to his secondary receiver. Williams and Galvin are back deep. It'll be Kristoff again on a high but short kick. A little room to work with the quality field position for Washington State to begin. That's Morrow again. On the delay ahead for four yards second down and six coming up. You think maybe Kyle Flood's beginning to think these trips out west to start our season. It's a little bit of deja vu. He went into overtime at Fresno a year ago a game that he very easily could have won. Took on the challenge of getting his team out here a couple of days early. Get used to the time zone change. So one of those tough non conference games to take on early in a season. Halliday looking for Myers. He's got it. Inside the 10. First down. The coaching points for Mike Leach. See the green grass. Exploit it with your progression. And he saw it on the outside. 43 yards. And again, the perfect ball. Accurately thrown so you can get the yards after the catch. Connor Halliday with a terrific ball to the outside to Isaiah Myers. Once again into that uh, tepid territory inside the 10 for Washington State. And, uh, we're going to rule out an incompleted forward pass. I think there was some concern for a moment by Maley that it could have been a lateral. But this is the part of the, the field that has given them some trouble and trouble tonight and touchdowns are at a premium now under nine minutes left it's beginning to look like a game that it's which offense is going to have the ball last mm -hmm. and you get down this close you execute on offense to give yourself a chance to score a touchdown this ball has got to get into the end zone but now second and goal the delay again tomorrow Drives ahead to about the five yard line, a gain of four. Snyder, Kevin Snyder, senior captain, middle linebacker with the tackle for Rutgers. He's exhausted all possibilities down here in the 10 yard line and going with the run game. A lot of times, what you see, especially from the five yard line, is the inside receiver to the top of your screen running a corner, the outside receiver just running a hitch, trying to high low that cornerback to the field. Third and goal. Halliday, it's caught, touchdown, Galvin. Rutgers gambled and lost. The most important part of the game plan, oh. Joe Rossi told us, tackling yep. in space and a missed tackle hurts the Scarlet Knights. You know, and early on in that moment, it appeared that the defender was actually going for the pick as opposed to the, the play. If he had simply made the play and wrapped up, probably he would have been stopped at the one yard line. Fourth wide receiver on the receiving end of a touchdown. Yards after catch. That time only one yard was needed. Washington State leads again. A remarkable night here in Seattle, Washington, to kick off Fox Sports coverage of college football here on Fox Sports One. Tim Brando, Joel Platt, Jenny Taft, Mike Pereira also at our booth tonight. There's Ricky Galvin into the end zone for the touchdown. And back and forth we go in the second half. Third lead change of this quarter. Grant brings it out. He's down at the 16, and markers fly simultaneously. And really shrinks the playbook for Ralph Friedrich. Paul James is the lone setback. He gets it. This should help the playbook as he bursts beyond the 15, possibly the 16 yard line. He's going to be up above 150 yards on the ground. I would expect a healthy dose of Paul James in this series. Not only can they start to bleed this clock down. 
but also it takes that detail oriented pass game out of the equation. You can just come off the ball and play with force and play with power, well, which I expect they'll do. He's got 146 yards, so he's just shy of 150. Play fake. Uh oh, looking deep. Carew is there. There was some contact late, but the ball was not catchable. Daquan Brown with a little smack going back with Carew as they head to the respective huddles. Third down and two coming up, and I believe Brown is being spoken to about the smack. Might want to limit this. There was some contact. Here. There was a little bit of contact right at the end. I don't think there was an advantage gained, which is what the official is trying to look for there. It was going to be incomplete regardless. Good no call by the back judge in this ball game. Nova incomplete, and he hurried that pass for Grant. Are you a little surprised they didn't hand it to 34? Absolutely, especially on second and short, backed up inside the 20. That was time to at least get a first down, maybe two. Pounded out with Paul James, who's had a sensational night. The experience of this offense rests in its offensive line and its running game, not in the passing game. Not only had Nova struggled late last year and early in this ball game, but none of the returning starters were wide receivers. Very surprised that they didn't feature the run game there in a crucial series in the fourth quarter. Especially after the eight-yard gain on first down. Joseph Roth will punt it away from inside his five-yard line. And River Craycraft is back deep for Washington State. That end over end approach that is taken by Rick Craycraft. He fumbles it. I think, I think there's a scrum, but Rutgers has it. And they do. What a huge break for the Scarlet Knights. Boy, Washington State was in position to get it, but at the point of attack, a huge scrum. And Rutgers. Anthony Chaffee, 31, got on top of it. He made five starts last year at corner, played in 12 games, a three-star recruit at a high school, just a sophomore now from Springfield, New Jersey. And he's, you're right, he wrestled this he one did. away. Watch number 31 as he dives in late. There's Coffey, and he's going to come back in there. Yeah. Christoph Williams had a great shot he at that. He had a great, a great shot at it. Well, actually, I believe it was number 16, not 18 for Washington State. Charleston White that had the shot at it. Take a look at this and then how quickly he's out dueled for it. Incredible. Keep on keeping on. Legs churning and he's down at the 30. Three yards shy of a first down. Darius Lamaro at number 28 with the tackle. Check out Michael Burton. He's going to come back and get the real key block on this all the way up at the second level. Here's the cutback, and there's the pin by Michael Burton. Excellent job. And that creates the enormous hole for Paul James to cut back and get eight yards. James again, the lone setback. Burton remaining in the game in sort of an H-back position, really. Goes into a pass pattern, and the secondary receiver is the recipient. That's Simmons again, five yards to pick up for him. That's how I like that play call. So that's when you give it a little change up. It's second and short. You know you can always come back to the run game on third and short, but you call a short type of stick route with the tight end. There's not a lot of the mechanics that the quarterback has to think about. Very high efficiency type of play. Nova again, crossing pattern complete to Carew, and he's down inside the 15. All of this brought on by the fumble punt moments ago by the normally sure handed River Craycraft. After the Washington State defense had the three and out, got themselves off the field, bringing Connor Halliday back on the, the field. With a four point lead. Jonathan Aiken stripped it of him. And now Rutgers in great shape. James, the lone setback. Grant split wide to the top of your screen. James, boy, does he run tough inside the tackle box tonight. Ahead for five. How many times have we seen him and Peoples, the backup, stop in the hole and cut back 
after the penetration from the Washington State defensive line forces him to do so. Excellent instincts and vision. May have even missed a face mask there as his head got tugged around at the end of this play. Yep, certainly could make a face for it. Kind of grazed it more than a grab. I'm glad they didn't throw the flag. Second and goal. James off the left side. Touchdown. Man, is he feeling it. We said he could get to 200. He's at a buck 80 now. Third touchdown of the night for Paul James, who has been workmanlike in his approach all night long. Taking advantage of turnovers, the fumbled punt from Craycraft. Rutgers gets the ball in great field position, and then they feature their all-conference running back, Paul James. Excellent drive from the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. I got to tell you, too, now, there's plenty of time here for Washington State. They, Absolutely. They've, they've scored three of their four touchdowns in less than three minutes' time, but they did manage to get a lot of time off the clock to only cover 50 yards on this drive. Well, that's what running the football will do to you, and that's what you got to do against a team like Washington State. This is the fumbled punt. He catches it. Excellent job by the gunner there. Aiken. Aiken caused the fumble. And that old offensive line coach has got to be digging that they've controlled the line of scrimmage. And the takeaway by Chaffee was one of those that I just wanted more than you because Washington State was in position to recover that fumble and he took it away from him. But now number 12 is coming out onto the field and he's thrown for 504 yards <laughs> all right touchdowns rather pedestrian 504 <laughs> when you think about it. And uh, they can score as we said in a hurry. Christoph Williams has it at his five. Stopped at the 24 yard line. Connor Halliday with a full complement of receivers to choose from, and that pass is caught. I think footsteps were heard that time by Dom Williams. He's had a couple of drops, one in the end zone tonight. Last year averaged a team best 16.2 yards per reception, but you're absolutely right. He saw the defender, and just at the last second, until he took his eyes off that ball, another excellently thrown ball from Halliday. Yeah, Delon Stevenson sizing him up. Morrow and Theron West, the senior from Compton, California, in the backfield. Rutgers brings three with pressure, and the pass is complete to Christoph Williams out to the 30. Yeah, the, Tim, that's the problem with the linebackers sneaking into the feet of the defensive line. They're trying to disguise and trying to trick Halliday into thinking that they're blitzing, but he's just going to get the ball, stand up, and throw the slant because that's where the green grass is. He's, he's taught to throw the ball to space. So when you disguise your coverage, you're manipulating your defense and giving him space to operate. On third and eight, Halliday. There's Myers. He's been the go-to receiver all night. First down, just beyond the 40-yard line of Washington State. A 10-yard gain. No need to worry about fourth down for now. There you see the timeouts remaining. Washington State still has one. And Halliday is sacked. Again, pressure off the edge. Boy, and Kamoko Ture has just been devastating coming off the edge. And there was also pressure from Longa, the leading tackler on this team from linebacker. Yeah, those two are the most athletic defenders that they have in the front seven, and they showed it on that last play. What a speed rush from Ture and Longa coming around the edge. That's phenomenal. And now a huge second and 19. Got to get half of this back to him. That's the objective. There's that hitch move again. This time he stays with it on the wide receiver screen, mainly. And he's decked at the 37 yard line by Garif Glashen. And now they got to start to think about moving a little bit quicker. One timeout, a minute 21. Halliday knows it. He's trying to get a play called. Third down and long. They've got two plays to get this first down, but they've got to get moving. Too many substitutions right now for Washington State. They go trips to the near side of the field. Calvin has been a go to guy in this set many times. And now Halliday's got to roll in that direction. He throws to him incomplete. Went back shoulder at the 31 yard line. And, and with the, it's fourth down coming up. And with the way the Rutgers is running the football, with only one timeout left, this is your ball game right here. Fourth down, 
Connor Halliday, over 532 yards on the night, five touchdowns, but he's got one play to keep his team alive. They've had a lot of success with Craycraft over the middle of the field against zone. They're playing zone now with two deep safeties. Look for Craycraft, inside receiver, bottom of your screen. Pressure again, this time up the middle, and you called it, but they covered it. Incomplete, and Rutgers takes over on downs. Boy, Jonathan Aiken again with a huge hit against the sure-handed Craycraft to dislodge the ball. And it was right in the seam, just as you called it, partner. And for the first time all second half, Halliday put a ton of air on that ball rather than driving it into the seam like he had been doing. Well, this is a huge win for the Rutgers program. It's because of all that air, Craycraft has to go up, yep. and then Aiken's able to go and attack the football once he catches it. What a play from Aiken. That's your game-winning play, and Rutgers knows it. Well, Joe Rossi said they needed to play with passion, swarm to the ball. That's what he wanted, and he got it many times over tonight. And Aiken was the guy that dislodged the ball from Craycraft on the punt that led to the Rutgers go-ahead and ultimately winning touchdown. The two biggest plays of the night, yep. without question. Well, you heard what that man, Kyle Flood, told us. Our guys have heard. They know what people are saying about them. The modern-day Internet athlete has a clue, and uh, we plan on proving otherwise. Our guys have bought in regardless of what the naysayers have out there. And now when they line up in the Big Ten, there will be a level of respect for this Eastern power that's gone to eight bowl games in the last nine years. Now, one of only 21 programs nationally to do that. Well, Nova takes a knee. And for Jenny Taft, Mike Pereira, alongside tonight, and my partner Joel Clad in my maiden voyage, many thanks. Let's take you to Los Angeles now. Fox Sports Live with Ryan Field and Cole Wright. It starts on Fox Sports 1 right now.